Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. Hey, let's go ahead and answer a question that you have. Uh, actually, uh, not you, because you're watching this. This particular individual, his name is uh, JT Bama. Uh, JT Bama. JT Bama. That's in Alabama who just got their butts handed to them this weekend. <laughs> JT Bama, roll somebody. Here we go. <laughs> hey Todd, uh, me and my wife um, faithfully watch your uh, weekly videos. Thank you for all your knowledge uh, and tips. Of course, I'm gonna answer your questions now. All right, you're always a fountain of good information. Well, great, thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, my question has to do with converting my 2019 Wolfpack 24 foot uh, toy hauler from a 30 amp to a 50 amp. We primarily camp with full hookups, so no boondock, no boondocking, uh, although we do have a thousand watt inverter, no solar. Our refrigerator is electric uh, only, not 12 volts, one AC and a convection microwave. Would it be more trouble than it's worth or is it even feasible to do? Also, I wouldn't be doing this myself. So here's the question, and it's not just you. I do get this question quite a bit, so that's why I want to answer it. If I have a 30 amp RV, what does it take to convert it over to a 50 amp uh, style RV, and what do I really gain? So let me go ahead and answer a couple questions. Are you capable of doing it? Yes. Is it feasible? Yes. Okay. Um, is it super hard? No. Okay. However, here's my caveat. There's a couple considerations that we got to look at. Now, first and foremost, if you have a 30 amp RV, that means you have a power cord coming in that is 10 gauge, capable of handling 30 amps, and only one hot leg, okay? If you were to take your breaker panel box and convert it over to a 50 amp style breaker panel box, they need two hot legs. And you're gonna connect it to a 50 amp service instead of a 30 amp service, so you're gonna have to switch your power cord out, okay? You're also gonna have to switch out your breaker panel box from a 30 amp breaker panel box. So all those breakers in there will need to come out. We'll need to mark all the wires coming in, right? What they are. So that way, when we take out the breaker panel box and put in a new breaker panel box, we can correctly identify everything. Oh, by the way, if you take out the breaker panel box, more than likely your uh, 12 volts are connected in there. So all of those have to be listed, disconnected, and then reconnected with the proper fuses. So there's gonna be some you know, um, plotting out involved. But here's the consideration. The, there's a cable between the wall of your RV and your breaker panel box, and it's set up for 30 amps. So that cable too needs to be replaced to a six gauge, three conductor or four conductor, depending on the type of cable you're using, right? One for leg one, one for leg two, one for neutral and one for ground, okay? So that's the consideration. A lot of people may have changed this out, changed out the power cord, but they did not upgrade the wire in between the two. So there's that consideration. Um, feasible to do. Like I said, you're gonna have to list all of those wires out, carefully pull those out, while it's not connected to shore power, of course. <laughs> put in a new um, RV style breaker panel box that can fit the same hole or roughly, you know, somewhere to it. You might have to cut it a little bit, put it in the new one. Now you gotta connect all the 12 volt connections and now connect all the 120 volt connections, okay? What do you get out of it? Well, a lot of people think, well, I can actually add more circuits and not really you can't because your walls are already formed. You gotta think about this. Where's the cable? Where's the wiring inside your RV? Well, it's between the walls and the walls are stapled together, okay? Now, not as feasible to take down a wall to add extra outlets or anything else, but this is what you can do. You can take all of that 30 amp load that you have and move some of those breakers over to the other leg, right? Now you can share between the two legs. Um, even if you don't wanna do that, in your case, if you're not going to upgrade, you could put in a 50 amp pedestal or 50 amp uh, breaker panel box and only use one side. 
I really need to move it over to the other because that's a 50 amp service. You have only got, you know, um, so many things that you can plug in there. And since there's only one AC, one microwave, and a couple other things, you're fine there, okay? Is it worth it, right? Me describing that, you didn't gain much other than maybe load balancing and maybe able to run the air conditioner and the microwave at the same time. I don't know that it's worth it. Here's another thought that you can do, and this is what I would say first, okay? First off, if you're tripping breakers, breakers are good for one um, disconnect, right? And then from there, they'll still work, but they begin to get weaker and weaker and weaker. If you have trouble with one breaker, always tripping. It's always tripping, which means it's just getting weaker and weaker and weaker. First thing I would do is replace the breaker. Okay, start off with the new one, right? It probably won't trip as much. Now, if the breaker is tripping because you are pulling too much, in other words, you got to say the refrigerator, refrigerator, uh, microwave, and air conditioner on at once, and you're peaking the 30 amp and the 30 amp breaker is tripping, Yes, I can see that you want to go 50 amp. Or what if you did this? If you had a pedestal and it's a 50 amp pedestal, so it's got a 50 amp outlet, a 30 amp outlet, and a 20 amp outlet. What if you were just to simply buy a 50 foot heavy duty extension cord? Plug that in, take the 50 foot heavy duty extension cord, bring it inside the RV, okay? Yes, you're gonna have an extension cord somewhere in the RV. Okay, that's, that's the drawback. But now you can connect, whether it's gonna be the microwave or whatever else to that, run the air conditioner and the microwave from the pedestal, 30 amps for the RV, 20 amps, up to 20 amps on that heavy duty extension cord. Something to consider, right? If there's a good path for you to get that cord and just to run whatever appliance you have that's making you consider, you know, upgrading from a 30 amp service to a 50 amp service, because you only have one AC. So it's not like you're trying to run two ACs. So the only thing I can see based on what you said was the AC and the microwave and refrigerator. Well, one of those, if you can move that over uh, to the 20 amp outlet, then maybe that will help out. Is it feasible? Yes. Do you get a lot of return in it? Probably not so much. Bringing an extension cord may be a good solution for now. There's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're at the end of the video, roll the bloopers. <laughs> JT Bama, um, is it a uh, BAM?